Brothers and sisters, once again I bring you greetings from my fellow officers and directors of the South England Conference. I've been involved in several meetings this week as we've discussed the reopening of our churches throughout the South England Conference. Since our churches have been closed for the past months, a deep clean needs to be done. Each church should have hand sanitizers available and good hygiene needs to be observed. It might be necessary to clean audio-visual equipment during services, particularly if handheld microphones are used. A team should be set up in every church to critically review the services so that best practice is employed. This might mean having the offering basket placed in a certain position so that members will deposit their donations rather than have members touching the basket as it is passed around. Of course, when the service is finished, Members should be ushered out, one row at a time, and the shaking of hands, the hugging, should be discouraged. Any members who have fevers or manifesting symptoms of the virus should stay at home. We should also recognize and respect the two meters distancing. This might mean occupying every other row, similar to what is done during communion services. Where we have large church membership, we should consider having two services with a break in between. And so, a typical service might look like this. A Sabbath school discussion on Zoom in the respective homes, let's say about 9.30 in the morning. Then the first preaching service in the sanctuary should take place around 12 p.m. A second preaching service can also take place around 3 p.m. Therefore, we have the break in between. Before we open the doors of our churches, every church needs to do a risk assessment and then share the document with the area coordinator and the conference officers. And friends, this is imperative. We cannot allow any church to begin worshipping until we are certain that our members are safe and are abiding with the government's guidelines. We will be placing a document on our website showing the different steps that need to be taken before reopening our churches. And so please visit our website and begin planning. This week, we will be visiting Area 1 to see how they are making disciples and building communities. As the restrictions on lockdown begin to ease and life slowly starts to return to normal, the churches here in Cornwall and Devon have been reflecting on some of the things that have been happening since our buildings were closed and the usual services suspended. Lives and Oslo are continuing to keep a connection with their community, offering support to those who are struggling, whether it be mentally, physically or financially, and are looking at new ways to reach people in worship and faith.
Our churches have remained connected through Zoom, running services for all ages. And almost every church community has been involved in supporting those isolated because of the coronavirus. Dropping off food or medication wherever needed. One example of that comes from Cornwall. Three senior members from the church in Bobbin usually run a community lunch every Monday. In spite of the lockdown, one of them, Cynthia Johnson, has continued with this ministry, making meals at her home and then walking up the hill to drop the food off at the homes of those who could no longer come to the church building. Cynthia doesn't have the internet, but for her, ministry continues as normal. During this time of lockdown, it's been really evident that it's brought about a new sense of community to those around us, to our neighbours, to our family, to those that are self-isolating. And there's been a huge need for us to reach out to them in this time. And that's exactly what the youth did just before the lockdown came into full effect. Um, we went out and delivered 300 leaflets to doors and we had a response from about a dozen people who wanted to talk or needed help with a prescription fulfillment um, or needed shopping. And through that, we've had some regular contact with a few um, with the hope of them joining in our Bible discussions and stuff. So it's been um, really a blessed, blessed time. Um, despite of everything that's happening, we can see the positives um, in our ministry. So that's been really great. Um, our online presence has been strong um, and keeping the church together as a community in helping each other and studying together and looking out for one another. And it's been, been really refreshing to see everyone joining together. Greetings to everyone <clears throat> and welcome to a sunny tour by where lockdown came quickly as it did for everyone else. Uh, it came without warning and soon our lovely beaches that would usually be teeming with tourists became quiet and deserted with only a few people walking around. I look after the Exeter and Torquay churches. Both congregations have a high proportion of people that would classify as vulnerable people and soon our emphasis became on making sure that they were looked after, that they were safe that they had all the supplies that they needed. In Turkey, one of our younger families, a family who consists of two key workers, uh, took it upon themselves to look after at least five households um, uh, of church members who couldn't go out and who needed to get their supplies replenished on a weekly basis. And we are so grateful for their help. Some of the young people would meet up with the older people and do their post for them and uh, go and pay their bills and uh, all around our district people were really caring for each other in various difficult situations. Many of our church members are key workers and one of our key workers became ill with COVID-19, ended up in hospital and for a while it seemed like it was touch and go. We were praying fervently with the family and we are delighted to report that after hospitalization of more than four weeks, he's back home and busy recovering, and we are so grateful for answered prayers. In Exeter, the Personal Ministries Committee was especially active. Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Eda Caleb Akiola. I'm the leader for Personal Ministry Department of Seventh-day Adventist Church Exeter. The Personal Ministry Department our committee met and uh, we discussed about the kind of intervention we can give to our community and we agreed on a few things. Uh, one of those things we agreed on is to give some money, to donate some money to Exeter, Central Exeter Food Bank, which we have done. And uh, we also find a woman within Devon who has been baking cake and also delivering you know, cake for other individuals and um, we contacted her and she was excited to do this for us. We delivered four cakes to Royal Devon and Exeter Hospital to four wards that have been combating uh, COVID-19 and the nurses, the health workers were excited about it and uh, some members who heard about this project 
we're excited and uh, ready to give some level of support. And um, uh, based on their support, we were able to deliver two cakes to Basketball Hospital, one to Arena Unit, which happens to uh, that happened, uh, which one of our members happens to be the head of that department, and to the ICU of that department. And just today, we've been able to deliver another cake to a care home. Beyond what the church has been doing, some members of the church have been so supportive to the community which they live. And uh, the church is also ready to give more support at this critical time. Thank you. Father, as we enter a new week, we ask that you will watch over us and protect us during these challenging times. May we seize the opportunity to make disciples and build communities. Please bless us to this end, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.